Hi Pop Tarts, it is Sagittarius season and I am a Sagittarius, an unabashed, unapologetic Sagittarius. There's no going back, I'm afraid there's nothing else I can be. I have always quite strongly resonated with my Sagittarius identity. A lot of the things I've read about what it means to be a Sagittarius sun sign I rub along with and I have tended to feel are correct about me. I occasionally might retweet the odd thing that I see about Sagittarius that I find I really strongly resonate with and I find really funny because it is just so accurate but it's been a while since I delved into what it really means to be a Sagittarius and thought about whether or not I resonate with that stuff so I thought it would be just a fun video for me to do on my channel to look into Sagittarius traits and characteristics what do people tend to find is truest about Sagittarius and do I feel like I can resonate with those things I have no idea how well this is going to go over I don't normally talk about astrology on my channel or anything like that but I thought it'd be fun for me so hopefully it'll be fun for some of you as well. Um, just a quick disclaimer before I get into sort of trawling the internet for different characteristics and stuff. It's only fair to say that your birth chart overall gives you a much more accurate read on how you are and how you're going to present to other people and how you're going to respond to different challenges in life. Um, it's not just the sun sign alone. There were lots of things going on astrologically speaking at the time of your birth. So obviously the best thing to do is to get your chart done, come to understand it more, have somebody read it for you and in interpret it for you if that's what you want to do. Um, sun sign is only one part of it and just for the record and for transparency to that end I am a Gemini rising and a Virgo moon and I think both of those things also can clearly be seen in me and my tendencies and the way that I come across to others or the things that I know about myself. In fact um, before I understood that much about astrology whatsoever a few years ago I noticed over and over and over again that people who were big into astrology would mistake me for an air sign constantly. Um, I would have so many people saying, okay, well, I know you're an air sign, but which of the air signs is it? And I would say, no, no, I'm a fire sign. And, and they would look at me perplexed like, you're not an air sign? What the fuck? Um, but then I learned about being Gemini rising and how the rising sign has usually got more to do with how you come across to people first off and how you interact in public settings and stuff like that. And then it made a lot of sense that a lot of these people who are very practiced at astrology and kind of pride themselves on guessing sun signs correctly had me wrong on that score. So they weren't really wrong at all. And nowadays when I get mistaken for an air sign, which still happens, I do say like, you know what, you're not wrong. I am a Gemini rising and everyone's like oh yeah 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 okay <laughs> I'm going to have a kombucha tea for this video, guys. I really enjoy this Equinox kombucha tea. I've been picking it up from Waitrose every now and again and I'm a fan. Oh, it's so refreshing. Oh, bloody lovely. I actually screenshotted something last night that I randomly came across that was about all the various different sun sign women in the zodiac and a few sentences about each of them. So let's have a look, first of all, at how much I resonate with the following. Sagittarius women. Her objective is to enjoy life to the fullest. She may seem like an anything goes type of person, but she's aware of her limits. She speaks her mind, but is not the most expressive with her inner feelings. She hates being criticized with a passion. She is generous and may forgive more than she should. She likes to have fun and try new things. There is a lot there to unpack. First of all, my objective is to enjoy life to the fullest. That's definitely one of my key objectives in life. And a lot of the most major decisions that I've made in my lifetime have been related to how much can I have fun if I make this decision? How much freedom will I have to have a good fucking time if I make this decision? And that is really a very key part of my decision-making process. And that's something I come across in literature about Sagittarius all the time. She speaks her mind, but is not the most expressive with her inner feelings. Okay, this is something that I read about Sagittarius over and over again, is that we very much speak our mind. We are blunt. We are one of the most straightforward sun signs in the Zodiac. And I will say that when it comes to my thoughts, I actually am expressive. I would not say that I'm blunt. I actually don't like bluntness. Um, I, I really I don't like it when somebody hasn't really taken into account another person's potential sensitivities. And I will try to address the way that I put something across. I'm not going to overly sugarcoat the pill. I'm not going to be deceptive, but I'm definitely going to think about what would be the best and most sensitive way to put my thoughts across to someone else. 
um, you know, unless we're having a political debate or something like that, and then I think everybody can be forgiven for just coming with the facts and leaving sensitivity out of it, as long as nobody's rude. Uh, when it comes to feelings, I definitely play my cards a lot closer to my chest. I don't know whether or not that is a common thing for Sagittarius or not. Let me know down below if you've got much more of a handle on this than me, or if you have strong opinions on the matter. But for me, yeah, I'm much more straightforward and much more liberal with um, discussing my thoughts and giving my thoughts and my points of view. When it comes to my innermost feelings, I'm definitely, I definitely feel like that's a little bit more dicey for me and I'm not necessarily going to talk about my innermost feelings with just anyone. It's going to be specific people at specific times. She hates being criticised with a passion. Um, I mean, you know, I've had my, I've had my times where I did not enjoy criticism and I didn't enjoy having my ass handed to me and it hurt my ego and it wasn't very nice. I wouldn't say I hate it with a passion, but I think doing what I do for a living and making videos and just having a public platform on the internet that's part of what's probably very much sort of talked me down from the ledge in that regard so I may have in the past been a lot more cagey and responded in a not very great way if I was criticized whereas now I expect to be criticized you know I expect people to have an opinion on what I do what I say etc and some of the things I've read about myself particularly in certain like Facebook groups where people don't seem to know I'm a member or maybe they just don't care um, have been really a riot it's been it's been funny I'm so I'm so comfortable with myself I know I'm not perfect I want to do what I do regardless of the fact that I'm not perfect I know people are gonna have opinions and actually I kind of enjoy reading people's less than stellar opinions of me now I think it's can be quite amusing actually why is this so good it's over so soon I'm trying to make it last but I love it she is generous and may forgive more than she should I've definitely read quite a few times that Sagittarians are one of the most generous sun signs. I'm definitely super generous. That's something that my friends and my partners have described me as a lot. So it's something I've kind of noticed. Um, I've even been told by a few of my closest friends that I'm the most generous person that they've ever met, which is lovely. Uh, generosity can have a shadow side and I definitely have interacted with the shadows of my generosity as well. And I've had to do some work there, but I love bestowing gifts. I love trying to be thoughtful. I love picking up little things that somebody might like. I just like the feeling of, yeah, I mean, generosity comes in many forms, but I really enjoy the ways in which I get to be generous um, with the people I love. Now, forgiving too easily or forgiving more than I should, I feel like that's something that I used to do in the past. I feel like it's something I'm over now. And maybe that's just the way that my life has gone, the life experiences that I've had. But I do think that I can be quick to forgive as a natural character trait that partly could come from, from the astrological um, energy of my sun sign. But because of the experiences I've been through, because of what's gone on with me, um, I am much more careful now about letting people back in. It's weird though, because I do contradict myself a little bit because I can be a little bit of a grudge holder as well. Um, <laughs> I mean, it won't be anything really violent or really like, I won't try and attack the other person or make their life a misery. But if I feel like they've wronged me or they've crossed me in some way, if they've betrayed me in some way, um, even if it's only minor to them, they will never get into my inner sanctum after that. I'll always be looking at them with a bit of a squinty eye, like you, you stay over there you fucking stay over there. <laughs> and that's something that, that I feel like comes from this sense of the need for self-protection and self-preservation. I don't know if that's necessarily a Sagittarius trait, the, the kind of urge towards self-preservation and self-protection and not really letting somebody in after an infraction towards you. Let me know in the comments whether or not you guys think that that is a typically Sagittarian thing. She likes to have fun and try new things. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just so Sagittarius, isn't it? I'm taking a look at an article called Sagittarius Season is Coming and it's actually from last year but there's some really funny bits in it. Sagittarius folks are curious, educationally driven people who also want to party all night and all day and then just keep going until they pass out. Why is this so accurate? <laughs> the only thing that's not accurate about this is I do not pass out, all right? I am up and on my feet until the party ends and then somebody's gonna have to cordially invite me to leave. I will never be one to pass out. I'm alive and kicking until it's time to go. <laughs>
I'm on astrologyzodiacsigns.com having a look at some traits. It says here that my strengths as a Sagittarius include generosity, there's that word again, idealism and a great sense of humour. I like to think I've got a great sense of humour. I do think I can be idealistic for sure, but both of those things are fair. Weaknesses for Sagittarius include promises more than they can deliver. Yes, that's true. Very impatient. I mean, I've gotten better, but I'm definitely never going to be the most patient person. That's a fact. And that's something I read often about Sagittarius as well, is that we do struggle with patience, for sure. We'll say anything, no matter how undiplomatic. See, this always comes up. This is such a thing. Like, so much stuff that I read about Sagittarius says they're so blunt, they're so undiplomatic, they will literally say whatever the fuck comes into their head. If they want to say it, they're going to say it. They've got, they pay no mind to other people's sensitivities. Is this a really common thing? Do you guys know Sagittarians that are like this? Because it's it's not something that I can relate to in myself. I can't connect to that in myself at all, really. I mean, I can go quite hard in debate. I c if I'm arguing to persuade and I've got my facts and I'm and I come correct, ready to debate, I'm not going to be overly sugarcoating everything to make sure that your sensitivities aren't rattled. Like, if you can't handle what a debate is, you shouldn't be in one. You know, there's the e and TP and me coming out um <laughs> but I you know I, I'm not I'm not blunt I'm not like I try not to be cruel with my words maybe I overcompensate when it comes to trying to make sure that I'm not blunt and I'm not irresponsible with my words because I know that I can cause a great deal of damage with my words um I often say to people that my my words my language my voice is really connected to my to the vibration of anger for me so like my throat chakra is up and about when I'm angry whereas most people can't put a sentence together when they're frustrated and angry they get very you know clogged here I'm the opposite way around I'm like I feel lucid in there I'm like and another fucking thing so <laughs> I try not to let that be something that comes out um I try not to let that rule me so maybe I overcompensate maybe I've managed to bypass hopefully that Sagittarius trait of being blunt and undiplomatic because I know in my heart of hearts that I, I could let that go to a really dark place and I have in the past I have really um when I was younger in my like late teens and early 20s particularly when I was still trying to get a handle on my rage problem um and I will leave a video down below on my addiction to anger and how I healed if you want to watch that but when I was still going through that phase I could cut somebody so much more effectively with my tongue than with an actual blade <laughs> I have made people belly cry from things I've said to them and, and that's that's left an effect on me the fact that I have that power and the fact that I I did those things to people I said those things to people so maybe it's that maybe it's like the way that my life has gone I don't want to be that person who's blunt and undiplomatic and I know how much how much pain I can cause when I get like that here's another great big thing that I see over and over again when I'm reading about Sagittarius characteristics and this is that we love to travel Sagittarians love to travel that's one of those those things that I see over and over again it's never really disputed um, now for me I do like travel I do like going to different places I have been to quite a few places on the map of the world there's still a lot of the world I haven't been to and that I want to go to I, I feel like for my age and for what I may have been able to do financially I spent my money on other things I didn't spend my money so much on travel as a lot of my friends did who are the same age and by the way I've noticed that one of the most searched things with my name in it on google is age kellyanne maddox age so let me put you guys out of your misery i'm 33 okay that's my age <laughs> so strange that so many people want to know my age but yeah i'm 33 okay dislikes for sagittarius clingy people being constrained off the wall theories details <laughs> that's an interesting little list okay clingy people um People that are clingy, people who are like very dependent, people who seem to require constant reassurance or who don't like it if you spend time with others, those people I've tended to find are not healthy matches for me, either romantically or in friendship. I had this friend for about five years. I was really invested in the friendship. I really adored her. And I would say genuinely that in the end, it was her dependency and her clinginess and the insecure behaviours that stemmed from those problems, which led to us deading our friendship 
relationship eventually, which was really sad. It's not that I dislike clingy people as a rule. It's not that I judge them or I feel like they can't change. I feel like they should be working on changing. And if I come across somebody who I'm interacting with and I'm forging some kind of a relationship with, and I recognize that they're being clingy, they're being insecure, they're being needy, they're being dependent, overly dependent, then I want to hear the right noises from them. And by that, I mean, I want them to say to me, I know it's a problem and I need to work on it and I don't want to make it your problem. It's something that I need to work on. The minute somebody thinks that their clinginess and their insecurity is okay and they see no problem with it and they won't see my point of view, that's where it becomes an issue and we can't really get any closer. Being constrained, yeah, I don't like being constrained. I don't like rules. I don't really like authority. I don't like the feeling that I'm that I'm a cog in a machine. I don't like any of that shit and I, I, that's very common for Sagittarius peeps. Very, very common. Off the wall theories. Um, I just don't like theories that have absolutely no empirical fact attached to them. I don't like theories that are based completely on anecdotal, very personal evidence. I don't like theories that cannot be explained in any way that includes any kind of logic. Um, yeah, I don't like those kinds of theories. They, they, they wind me up for definite. If that's a Sagittarius thing, then I'll take it. I'm more than happy with that. Sagittarius people don't like details. I mean, I'm a Virgo moon, so I have a very weird relationship with details. <laughs> I don't like them, but I do. I run away from them, but I also want to run fast towards them and record them in my pink filofax. It's just, what can you do? Sagittarius born are able to transform their thoughts into concrete actions and they will do anything to achieve their goals. That's a bit Machiavellian. I don't know if I do anything to achieve my goals, but I am very keen on the whole idea of, you know, making sure that my desires turn into tangible reality. I am a, I'm an empire builder in my own way, and I don't see the point in flights of fancy that don't lead to anything concrete. I want to do something with the ideas that I have and the, the energy that I have. I want to make it real for definite, and I think that's very Sagittarian. It also says here, their open mind and philosophical view motivates them to wander around the world in search of the meaning of life. Um, you know what? I actually I actually have a little bit of a bugbear whenever there is that rhetoric that comes up that you've got to go traveling to find yourself or you've got to go traveling to find the meaning in life first of all I think it's very it's a very privileged thing to say um, and it discounts a lot of people who are also searching for meaning who can't go traveling for one of many fucking reasons uh, whether it's physical financial whatever um, so I don't like it for that reason but I also don't like it because I think it's a way for people to convince themselves that if they just book a few plane tickets and have a few experiences they're going to come to this higher like knowledge or this deeper learning about themselves and they're going to somehow be better than others um i have spent a significant amount of time actually with a small handful of people who've traveled really the majority of the world in the time i've known them and they still have the same issues they still have the same hang-ups in fact one of them came back from traveling the world with exactly the same bigotry they had when they left um so so you don't need to go anywhere to find yourself. You don't need to travel anywhere to do that deep inner work. So that's something that tends to bother me. I do think it's possible that Sagittarius people have deep and meaningful reasons for wanting to travel and they probably suck the marrow out of the traveling experience more than maybe any of the other sun signs and they have a you know a, a bunch of profound reasons for wanting to go traveling but i think there can be a shadow to that and it wouldn't surprise me if there were a lot of sagittarius people who actually were falling into that shadowy territory of telling themselves that they're better or they're illuminated because they've been traveling and they're in the clubhouse of people who understand the meaning of life now or something and I'm trying to avoid that. I've definitely got the seed of that crap within me, but I'm trying my best to consciously avoid falling into that trap. Sagittarius needs to be constantly in touch with the world to experience as much as possible constantly that is a little bit ott for me i have spent time with a lot of sagittarius people who are plenty more curious and extroverted than me and much more wanting to have 
both feet on the street if you will um i need a lot of downtime i need to recharge my batteries alone i need to decompress i have a very dedicated spiritual life so for me constantly being in touch with the world is too much i do want to be involved with the world though i don't want to check out of the world in any way i want to do my bit i want to be of service um and you know there are various different ways in which i do that in my community and i hopefully do that online as well so you know i do want to be in touch with people i do want to be in touch with this planet i don't want to duck out of trying to sort out the problems that we're experiencing as a society and as a race um so yeah that is definitely part of what i would say um makes me want to be constantly in touch with the world but i need that downtime i've got to have that decompression and woe betide anybody who wants to get close to me who doesn't understand that because that relationship will quickly be nixed <laughs> Uh, again here we've got the tactless, undiplomatic, blunt, just keeps coming up. I'm sure there have been situations where I've been that way for definite, but uh, yeah, it's not something I identify as being as being a central part of my personality. If anything, I'm probably too careful with what I say sometimes. I do see a lot of things about how much Sagittarius people love to learn about different cultures and love to have a sense of how people in other parts of the world live and all that kind of thing, and that's very much true. I've definitely observed that in other Sagittarians that I've been around, and um, I think it's also true that we're very interested in learning how people in the past lived, how people in different civilizations lived, like all of that kind of thing is gonna be massively appealing to us. This website says that Sagittarians are deeply moral. Um, I don't know if I like the word moral. I think I prefer conscientious or ethical because moral sounds a bit puritanical and a bit rigid and a bit like uh, prudish and I definitely am not those things. Um, I, I don't I don't identify at all with those things. Um, so yeah, I think I think we try to be a lot of us as ethical as we can because I think Sagittarians are very much not attracted to hypocrisy and I think we are quick to judge hypocrisy in others or to move away from hypocritical people or hypocritical movements or whatever so we don't want to exhibit those things in ourselves but to be honest with you I think there's no way that you can not be a hypocrite when you're thinking about ethics and being conscientious because there's so many different things you're really stepping on landmines all the time ethically you can only do your best um, and I do think there's a danger that Sagittarians can like beat themselves up a little bit if they're not completely in alignment with their ethics every minute of every day including me I can be like that as well also referring back to an earlier piece of information about Sagittarians we don't like criticism in fact some of us despise criticism so we definitely don't want to be caught out being hypocritical when we've maybe been very clear about our ethics or very vocal about our beliefs we want to make sure we're always towing our own line so that we're not called out I guess and I suppose that's the shadow one of the shadows of Sagittarius again I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments below astrologer peeps let me know what you think I'm reading a lot of things on different websites about the optimism of the Sagittarius and that's definitely something that is very common when we think about traits associated with Sagittarians and it's actually just reminded me of that Nicki Minaj track I am a prime optimist Sagittarius so you know I'm an optimist I love those lines I love those lines I'm like yes me too Anyway, um, yeah, so that's something that comes up a lot. And I am very optimistic, but there's a deep, deep shadow to my optimism. I think that people who are overly optimistic can fail to put the key planning in place that they really need in order to avert issues later down the line because they tell themselves um, in both an optimistic and an idealistic way that's another common trait for Sagittarians that everything will be okay and they'll be able to pull it out of the bag at the last minute and it will all be all right in the end and actually that has definitely caused me problems I don't know if other Sagittarians have similar issues um, but I think that can be the shadow of optimism it's just leaving things till the last minute coasting telling yourself it's going to be okay or that you don't really have to deal with a problem until it's right in front of your face um, so yeah that's definitely a, a shadow that, that I've found the Sagittarian always needs to feel free they do not like being tied down and cannot stand the slightest feeling of claustrophobia either physically or emotionally restriction and limitation
limitation of options creates depression for the archer. Freedom is what Sagittarius values most. You know what? That is definitely very, very true. Um, there's a lot of that that I deeply resonate with. I do need to feel free. I do need to feel like there's options. I don't like the feeling of being suffocated by something. I don't like the feeling that I'm being urged or cajoled into placing all of my focus and all of my attention onto one thing or one person to the detriment of everyone else. And as I've grown older, I've recognised that even though there is um, a sweetness and a security to that and I can buy into it for a while, I don't like it in the long term. It's not something I enjoy. I need to have that freedom. And that comes out of me in my personality in many different ways. So that's definitely a really interesting thing to note. And there are so many websites that describe the need for freedom and the hatred of restriction as being very Sagittarian. And I can 100% relate to that. Honey bunnies, I have very much enjoyed going through some of the key character traits for Sagittarius and just talking about whether or not I resonate with them, whether or not I relate to them. I'd love to know your opinions down in the comments, not only about the Sagittarius people in your life, yourselves, if you are Sagittarians, what do you think? What kinds of traits do you relate to? What kind of traits do you not? And let me hear about your signs as well. What is your sun sign? Can you relate to a lot of the stuff you read about it? Or do you think that's got nothing to do with me? I can't relate to that. And how many of you have actually had your birth chart done? How many of you understand how, at the very least, your moon sign and rising sign interact with your sun sign? Because I'm learning more about that all the time. And it's really given me a whole new perspective over the last two and a half years or so on what is really going on with me astrologically. And that's been really intriguing. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. I've really enjoyed myself. So much love until next time, baby cakes. I've got some really cool shadow work stuff coming. I've got more unboxings coming for those of you who enjoy the unboxings. So yeah, just keep your eye on the channel and I will update you all on social media as usual. Much love, blessed be. Mwah.